Hey, it's Coolio if you don't know. Welcome back to another uh, episode of Let's Play Tome, Tales of Majayal. Uh, a bit of a super late night recording this time, so if I sound kind of different from my previous videos, that's why. Let's do things. Got <laughs> play us some tome. Um, so last time we, um, we tried a thing that didn't really work. Uh, the arcane blade didn't work so well for us, but I had never tried that, uh, that class before. Can I go with something that's a little more familiar to me right now? So we're gonna go with a Thalor. No, there it is. Thalor Archer. And we're going to call him Dante. I doubt anyone will catch on to my naming scheme, but uh, if they do, hi. All right. So I'm a little more familiar with the overall feel of archers. In fact, I've been playing as an archer off camera and have been doing very well for myself. I actually unlocked the brawler class. Which is something that I didn't have before. I'm gonna do a build about how I usually do it. Mm. I think I actually want... Yeah. I want to disengage. Field control is an important skill for archers. You don't want to be directly next to your target as much as possible. Oh, I still have a class point. Um... Well, let's get some more stamina regen. Welcome, Dante. You are of the Thaloran, the, Elvis, the elven race closest to nature. Your people have lived for thousands of years in the forest, rarely taking part in the events of the outside world. Yet when their home is threatened, the Thaloran elves can prove to be fearsome combatants. You lived a peaceful life deep in the forest for many years, but lately you have grown restless and have decided to step into the world. You have decided to venture into the old and wild places, looking for ancient treasures and glory. You have come to the western side of the Thaloran forest, to the lair of Norgos. Norgos was a steadfast ally of the Thaloran, uh, protecting the western border, but lately has grown corrupt, even attacking the Thaloran. To the east of Chateau, the Thaloran capital, lies a dark part of the woods. Ever since the spell blaze, this area has been corrupted. The wildlife there has been transformed. After days of travel, you found Norgos' lair and entered it. What will you find there? That's what we're gonna find out. Let's get her started. And immediately pick up a quiver of elm arrows, which I don't think will be any better than what we start with. I'll take a look anyways. Slightly more powerful, but 5 points less capacity. That's something that you do have to worry about as an archer, is your um, arrow capacity up here. That will go back up over time and can go up higher uh, if you have your bow mastery skill upgraded. But you still do need to kind of watch out and make sure that you don't run out of arrows in the middle of everything. Now, the, um, the game might be kind of laggy right now because I do have, um, there are some weather effects going on here, some snow. And also, let me turn on lore display again. There we go. 
Can I turn off weather? I'm sure that I can, I just don't know where the option is. Ah, weather effects. Hopefully that'll help, uh... Helped it a bit, but not very much. Archers are pretty survivable for the most part. As long as you can keep control of the field. Like I said, field control is an important part. Because once things start actually reaching you, then you have a problem. Also, this is supposed to <clears throat> Come on, over here. There you go. Come on. The game usually does a, uh, a pretty good job of remembering what, where is the last place you've put a certain item. A certain skill, I mean, so... Things will usually fall where I want them to, but sometimes it does kind of freak out slightly, especially if you start getting a lot of items that have, um... that have activate effects on them. Because whenever you equip such an item, it will automatically go into your, uh... into your hot bar. Oh, well, that's uh, level one clear. So let's take a look at what we got here. Also, it's kind of a darker color than it usually is, which is weird. Usually anything that lands in the transmogrification chest has a lighter yellow rather than this dark, almost brown. Mm. Pair of leather boots. And I think I'm good. On to level two now. Big long corridor to start things off. And our first level up. I usually end up holding on two points for a level or two. With most characters, by the time you actually defeat the uh, the first boss, your character will be like level five or six. So then you have things that have opened up at level four, and you have more of a selection of what you can uh, actually play with. Okay. I have to get reacclimated with uh, actually talking during these. I've pretty much been playing Tome for most of the day. Just by myself, so. This time you get to watch. Oh man. Although there is one run that I really would have liked to record. Like, I really wish I had been recording because... Um, like I said, I unlocked Brawler class. I saw some things that I'd never seen before in this game. And got beaten by a boss that I don't think I've ever faced. 
and score wise it was the um it was tied for the highest score I've ever I've ever um registered so Now what I like to do um you have a main set and an offset here so you can switch you can switch between them by default by pressing Q um I think I might hold on to this for later. And this. But uh, by default you get a uh, rough leather sling and some shots. I like to have my offset to be a melee alternative. So that if I am stuck in close combat and don't have any arrows left, at least I have a way to still fight effectively. Okay. Oh, I forgot to switch back to my main set. There we go. Now we are approaching the first boss, which is Norgos. This boss is kind of interesting because there are two different Norgos fights that can happen. There is one where Norgos is completely immobile and his strategy involves pretty much pulling you in and trying to freeze you to death. And the other one where Norgos will actively move toward you and try to maul and bear hug you to death instead. Oh, we shall see what happens. I gotta be careful. There he is. And it's the mobile one. Okay. Level 7 against level 2. Oh dear. Sun infusion. Potentially very... Oh, jeez. Hi. Um, oh, I must have pressed the wrong button there. I was trying to um, jump away, but that kind of didn't happen. There we go. Control 1. That is disengage. Of trying to ration my moves out here so that I can survive. This is not a particularly easy battle, especially when Norgos keeps blinding me. Um, yeah, let's unleash here. Yeah. Wild infusion, always a good thing. Reduces the amount of damage you take and potentially removes a debuff as well. There we go. Ooh, River's Fury. And the Rod of Recall, which is always given for your first boss. I am going to... Oh, what's this? Hmm. So... Basically, it gives me an additional uh, disengage. So now I have one from my equipment. I have one as a um, a talent. So I'm pretty mobile right now, actually. And some pretty good stats. I'm going to put River's Fury here on my offhand. I don't know if I'll ever use it, but if I'm stuck and uh, have to de <laughs> excuse me have to defend myself in melee, 
I am ready. There. So let's go take a look at our level up screen here. I have a few levels to um, distribute. I usually take one point of armor training just so that I can wear like iron things. I'm not going to go any farther than that with that. Go a couple of points in cunning, survival, heightened senses, etc. Put this up to 24. And. Your most useful stat for Archer is going to be Dexterity. Cunning is pretty good and Strength is pretty alright too. It is physical, uh, physical damage, so I mean Strength will boost that. Let's go with that. Uh, finish clearing out this level here. It's probably not very much else to kill, but every bit helps. Oh yeah. I move that there. This here, as it usually goes there. Uh, here's a nifty thing that I can do, but that snake is too far. Piercing arrow. When you're faced with a large group of things, which happens a lot in the old forest, if I can actually get there and show, show you that, the um, piercing arrow and a few other skills are going to be essential. And there we go. Go ahead and recall our, ourselves out of here. Mm, nothing much interesting here, so I'll let that go and get some Muda. I don't know why it's generating the level. The world map is always the same. I mean, come on. Well, I say always the same. There are a few areas that are randomly placed, but it doesn't take uh, like two, three minutes to place a couple of areas in semi-random places. Now the Heart of the Gloom is kind of a weird place. Also, if you're wondering why I'm resting for so long, is because it rests until all of my um, cooldowns have passed, and it's cooling down my uh, Rod of Recall. <laughs> so that first rest is going to be a little long. But... Um, Yeah, this place is weird. It has weird variations of wildlife creatures that don't show up anywhere else. Like, you see, that's a gloomy brown bear, gloomy giant brown mouse, deformed great wolf. And dark tendrils, which take forever to actually go away and usually end up hitting me, causing some minimal damage and pinning.
That's where your unflinching resolve can come in handy. Which I don't think that archers have, but you can you can get uh, some unflinching resolve by other methods, regardless of which class you are. Uh, so yeah, this is a rare. I don't know if I've ever pointed that out, but um, I don't know if I've ever played long enough to point them out because they never show up in the first dungeon. But there are random rare spawns. And those tend to be pretty dangerous if you if they catch you in wares. I now just have, yeah, a normal little pair of rough leather boots. Let's go in and replace those. Transmog things that I don't need. But um, rare spawns will almost always drop random artifacts and will sometimes drop unique artifacts. So if you feel confident enough to take them down, go ahead and do so. You could be well rewarded for it. Oh dear. What just happened? Oh. Something teleported behind me. That jerk. And I think that's it for this floor. Uh, it didn't look like anything really particularly interesting. Uncanny dodging, huh? Hmm. Actually, my pair of iron boots is of uncanny dodging. How uncanny is that? I just realized that now. Huh. So here's a thing that you can do. Um... If you're playing as a non-arcane class, and that you have been to Zyger before, um, well, I'm, I'm just going to pick Leon and I will protect you, because I like the stat bonuses and things that these escort quests give. But, um, there is a town called Zyger. We're in dwell the Zygaranth. And my paladin buddy here is not in the best place. Yeah, this is going to be kind of terrible. Yeah. Well, that happened. But, um... The Zygaranth are basically a group that participated in an event called the Spell Hunt. And I shall regale you with a little bit of um, of Majayal lore here. As well as is my understanding of it. So, the spell hunt is, uh, as I understand it, kind of an after effect of the spell blaze, which was, uh, ah, darn it, I don't remember exactly what the spell blaze was, but is basically 
a surge of arcane power that kind of went haywire and um, left a huge scar in the world. So the Zygaranth decided, hey, we don't want this stuff messing up our world more than it already is. So we're going to go around and um, destroy every, you know, every piece of arcane anything that we can find. So, despite the spell hunt being along the past now, Zyger is still around and they still oppose everything magic. And it is possible to actually join them and, um, you know, fight for nature and fight against anything magical. Alternately, it's possible to fight with the other side and actually go into Zyger and kill everyone. But um, once you've actually aligned yourself with Zyger once, that will unlock the option that if your if your combined character race and class are not arcane and your uh, your escort quest involves someone with arcane powers, you can kind of screw with their portal which instead of sending them to safety, will send them to Zyger and directly into trouble. And you get bonuses from Zyger if you do that. So I know my, my, um, my explanation there was probably not, you know, top quality, but I don't think that you're watching my videos to get top quality information, quite frankly, if you don't know. <laughs> so now I'm going to, as I explained before, every five levels, instead of a generic point, you get another class point. And bring that up to a nice even number of 12. And put this up to 28. All right. Shadow Mame. Well, it's a little better light radius, and um, it'd be more useful if I was a melee character, but um, it's not terrible. It's definitely better than the default thing that we have, so. All right. So we are here in the third level of the Heart of the Gloom. Oh, jeez. Where suddenly a deformed wolf pops up in our face and halfway kills us, and that's not even the biggest problem that we're um, contending with here. What? what are you doing in C2? You should be in C6. There we go. And use it. That is a sustained skill. Um, that stuns me out of being able to use my regen. 
I'm going to jump away. It's going to jump toward me. I'm going to jump away again. And uh, probably die. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. So that didn't go too well. I'm, uh... I'm kind of blaming the Let's Players curse on that. Because I've been doing... I've been having some pretty good rounds for most of the day. And then this happens where I die within about half an hour of playing. <laughs> well... I mean, it, as mentioned, it has been about half an hour that I'm recording now, so... Probably just as well that um, I call the video here, and we're going to try again. I'm going to try this same character again, see what we can, uh, see what we can accomplish. Because last time, the second run went better than the first run, so. Anyway, I'm Coolio if you don't know, and I will see you guys next time.